Hello, my name's Peter Russell. I'm the editor of MoTackle. What we've decided to do is to put together a little information video just for you. We're going to wander through Australia's largest tackle store, Fishing Tackle Australia, and have a look at some of the goods and services that we offer there. We'll be also looking at some of the great products that you can order through Mo Tackle. So, why don't we go and have a look? So here we are, Australia's largest tackle store. I mean, it is, just have a look at the size of it. We've got plenty of room and we've got plenty of stock. And the reason we carry this stock is so that we can fulfil your mail orders to Mo Tackle. At Fishing Tackle Australia, we refer to this as our wall of reels. And we're represented with Alvi, Mitchell, Butterworth, Penn, of course, Silstar, Shakespeare and Zebco. If that reel from those manufacturers are available in Australia, then it's on our shelves. We've also got the full range of Abu, Daiwa and Shimano. And it's all available for mail order through Mo Tackle. Now there's one thing about it, we're never short of a rod. Because this is only part of our extensive range. And we carry in stock, we carry over a thousand rods from all the major manufacturers. Of course, one thing we do at Fishing Tackle Australia, we're pretty big on walls. And this is a really big wall. Have a look at this. This is our lure section. And here you will find probably more lures than anywhere else in Australia. In fact, we guarantee it is the biggest selection of lure anywhere in Australia. The colours, the styles, the types. Look, you could come in here and actually just spend a week browsing through. If it's one thing that every angler needs, it's fishing line. And here at Fishing Tackle Australia, well, it comes in all styles, shapes and sizes. We have the IGFA lines, of course, and your standard fishing lines. And we're talking about lures, spinner baits. Let me tell you, we've got them coming out our ears. Rod and reel combinations, now that's one thing we really do pride ourselves on here. And you can find at any given time in store over 140 of these, from the major manufacturers in overheads, in thread lines, it's all there. Of course, one of the other things that every angler needs is hooks. And we've got some really great hooks from the Mustard and True Turn range in all sizes, all shapes, all designs. Of course, one of the things that we are doing right here at Fishing Tackle Australia, getting much more involved in fly fishing. So watch the pages of Mo Tackle in future months and you'll be able to pick yourself up a good bargain in the fly tying and fly equipment area. It takes us quite a while to put together an issue of Mo Tackle, but the whole job is done right here in this office. We put the finishing touches to it on Tuesday, it rolls on the press on the Wednesday, and on the Thursday, just to make sure the subscribers get their copies nice and early, this is what we do. We're standing in the mail order department of Fishing Tackle Australia. Of course, this is Mo Tackle headquarters. And we're talking to Doug, who's our mail order manager. Doug, one of the things when people place mail orders, we do have a few problems, don't we? Yeah, we have a few problems, generally with credit cards, actually, Pete. Um, expiry dates are one of our problems. Mm -hmm. People gen generally don't put it on their, their uh, form. Now, that's pretty important. We yeah. have to have that, don't we? Yes, it makes it hard to uh, charge it to their account. Another problem is the last four numbers on the end of their card. Generally, we end up with 12 numbers when they're supposed to be 16. Right, because those, those four numbers can sometimes disappear on the end of the little pickies and things, yeah. can't they? Yeah, there's a little picture on a lot of cards, which makes it very easy to miss. Yeah. yeah, and of course, one of the things you do have to do is you then have to phone them, and you have a few problems with phone numbers, I believe. Yeah, contact numbers are good. We need a contact number on a, a few orders, but um, in general, if we get a contact number at home and both people work, it makes it very hard to contact them, which does delay their order, puts the whole system a bit behind. Right. Of course, one of those things, if you are at work and you can't take phone calls at work, we do understand that. But if you can leave us with a work number, look, we can contact you during the day. Doug, one of the other things, of course, you have full uh, responsibility as far as uh, cutting deals and making uh, special prices are concerned. Yes, we're out to win all the orders. Um, Price-wise, if people can come up with a price better somewhere, it does happen occasionally, um, let us know, tell us who it is, and certainly we'll look after you. We'll equal the price and often chuck in a free spill of fishing line as well. There you go. So when you think you've got your best price, give Doug a ring because uh, he hates missing a deal, don't you? Certainly do. So uh, he will probably even better the price, and as he said, a free spill of line. Look, you can't lose, can you? Thanks very much, Doug. No worries, Pete, thanks. 
So there you go, we've had a look through the store, we've had a look at mail order, and you can see how it all works. Why don't we now go and have a look at some of the great range of products that we actually sell here at Fishing Tackle Australia and through the pages of Mo Tackle. Look at that, nice new rod, nice new reel. This is one of the new, brand new, and let me tell you, very new, Team Iowa rods and reels. The inline rod, you'll notice, no runners of course, the line actually goes up the centre of the rod. And a lot of people have said, oh, this could be a little bit of a problem, but let me tell you, Dyer have really put their minds to this and designed a rod with spirals. Right, so it's not just a hollow blank, it actually has spirals up the inside that the line rides on. So you don't get line wear, you don't get line friction, and it's smooth and continuous operation. Of course they've matched this with a new Daiwa reel, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, beautiful to cast, uh, plenty of line capacity for anybody who wants to use it, and a drag system that's really just like silk. Now one of the things that's been a problem around for years, you get the left-handed fisherman who says, oh yeah, well that's fine, it's okay for you fellows who have got the right-handed fisherman and you know, you know, you can cast, you don't have a problem. Well, I tell you what Dyer have done, they've come up with a dedicated left-handed model. And I mean it is completely dedicated right down to the reel where the, where the trigger grip on the reel itself actually is in a position for a left-handed fisherman. I'll just get rid of that. There you go, you see? It's actually perfect casting for a left-handed caster. Uh, looks a bit awkward in my hand, but I'm not a left-handed caster. But there you go. Perfect inline rods. Beautiful. Lovely action. Certainly going to be a big hit in Australia. And uh, as I said, certainly catering for both sides of the spectrum, with right or left hand. Make sure you have a look at them. Certainly going to be a very good Daiwa product. those funny things, it, it really is a good product. It is, it Top is. Top of the line sort of stuff. It is, definitely. Talking with uh, Andrew from OTG, of course, OTG are the Australian importers of Berkeley and Abu Garcia. And one thing we're talking about today, of course, is the fabulous Fireline. Uh, the biggest advantage with the Fireline is the fact that it's uh, low stretch, such uh, as with the normal traditional braids. Um, and it's also very fine diameters. Right. When it first comes out of the packaging, though, it's quite stiff. And of course, it's, uh, it's got a black coating, which does come off. Would you like to explain to us why that happens? Yeah, definitely. Uh, firstly, the colour, that's actually uh, a dye that's been impregnated into the line, and that does come away with wear and tear. Uh, that doesn't affect the, uh, the breaking strain of the product, and uh, that's just a normal thing that happens with all braids. Um, the, the fact that it's a little bit wiry uh, also benefits casting, especially with bait casters. It reduces that digging problem that's associated with the traditional braids. Yeah, it does, and that does happen with some of the traditional braids. You uh, you get that <laughs> sudden stop effect. Definitely, and, definitely. Uh, I know I, I use Fireline myself, and I know that uh, it certainly is a good product. And for all of those, all of us who use Fireline, and particularly on bait casters, one of the great advantages is the new green Fireline. That's right, green Fireline. Andrew, tell us all about it. Well, this uh, this colour fading that we we're talking about uh, a little earlier with the grey Fireline. Uh, has been uh, has been fixed up with this new green file and Peter. It's they've come up with a new formula in America which stops this colour from disappearing out of the line. So we've got a high visibility line, uh, good for lure casters. It actually becomes invisible underwater where uh, ultraviolet light is uh, filtered out, so the fish can't see it. Uh, and we're really excited about this new product. I can understand that. It's uh, one of those things of uh, anybody who does a little bait casting, of course, and you want to follow the flight of your lure, sometimes you lose sight of it. With that high vis line, you're going to be able to see it. And uh, of course, high vis fire line, well, that really is a plus. Uh, if you think about spooling up, I'd certainly suggest you get onto it. Now one of the things that everybody's heard about of course are the new range of rods that were designed by Ian Miller and Steve Starling and they're called the Steve Starling range from Shimano. And I was going to tell you about them but I thought well what's the point of me saying anything? Why don't we just hear from the man himself? Ian and I have been excitedly awaiting the return of these sample rods from Japan for several months now. This is the first sample of the Steve Starling signature series of rods from Shimano. Ian and I worked for over a year to design this range of rods and we honestly believe that they're the best production rods ever to be seen in Australia. Ian, what was it that you thought that was missing in production rods up to this point? Well, there's been plenty missing in production rods, Steve, but probably the main thing was that most production rods are built and then put to a purpose. What we did with these rods 
was pick the purpose for the rod and then design the rod for that particular usage. Well, there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. There are a lot of people around who will tell you that Ian Miller is not only the best rod designer in Australia, but also arguably one of the best rod designers in the world. And for him to say that he can hold one of his rods in one hand and one of these in the other and close his eyes and not be able to tell the difference, well, it speaks for itself. And it's the only reason that I put my name on a series of fishing rods. I wouldn't have done that unless I believed in the product, and I believe in these. So there you go, Steve Starling talking about the great range of Steve Starling rods designed by himself and Ian Miller and of course available from Shimano and of course you can find those on the pages of MoTackle too. Of course, one of the things that we do have here at Fishing Tackle Australia, and of course through that Mo Tackle, is a great range of the Polano Tackle Boxes. Now, everybody's heard of Polano Tackle Boxes. Made in America, some models are now made in Australia, but they are renowned for their ruggedness, their uh, excellent construction, and of course, their worm proof. Now, some of you are going to ask exactly what that means. When you get those little soft plastics that uh, are becoming very popular right throughout Australia, they're actually treated in a special substance. And if you put those in a normal plastic box or plastic tackle box, they will eat straight through the bottom of it. Now, the Planos, of course, all worm-proof, so you don't have to worry about it. Get yourself a good Plano box and you won't have a problem. We've got a couple of models here that we probably should take a closer look at, and you never know, you might find the tackle box that you need. The great thing about Polano Tackle Boxes is the range of boxes that is available. And the one I have here is the 2300. Not the smallest in the Polano range, but a very nice, good entry level box. If you're looking for a small tackle box yourself, or looking, one, looking for one for a kid, this is probably going to be the box. Uh, it opens up, uh, it's cantilevered into three shelves. Look, plenty of room to fit lures, uh, hooks, swivels, sinkers, anything will go into the top of this box, uh, which makes it really good. And of course, underneath, Plenty of room, plenty of room in here. Uh, carry a spare fishing reel, some fishing line, uh, even take your cut lunch along. Let me tell you, if you're looking for a small tackle box, this is definitely going to be the one. Uh, another bottle that I'd like to show you here is actually the 7803. Now the 7803 has a clear top, as you can see. Beautiful thing about that is that it also opens directly. You don't have to open the whole tackle box. All you've got to do is lift the lid and there you are. Now this is particularly good if you're out lure fishing and you want to change lures in a hurry or you're moving around amongst uh, a, a number of lures, all you've got to do is whip one off, throw it into the top of the box, you can see where it is and if you want to go back and find it, you certainly can. The box opens up, just like that. Once again, candle lever, uh, three trays, with adjustable dividers. So you can actually make up your own compartments. Plenty of room for lures, plenty of rooms, hooks, swivels, uh, small items, anything. Not a problem up here. Underneath, huge amount of room. You could certainly pack your cut lunch in there. Uh, plenty of room for a camera, uh, spare reels, spare fishing line, everything in this box. No doubt about Polano, they've put a lot of thought into making these tackle boxes uh, so that you get the best of the lot. Having a look at the, uh, the big daddy of the range, of course, great little box, this one, and I shouldn't say little because it is absolutely quite large, and this is a 759. You've got all the advantages in this box. You've got the little top opening section here, where once again you can do quick storage of lures, or you can put sinkers, you can put hooks, uh, swivels, all ready for rigging, straight into the top. The box opens up, huge area in the top in which you can put uh, hangers for spinner baits or for lure hangers, they go in there. Uh, plenty of room in the top for a spare reel or two spare reels, uh, camera, which you cut lunch in there as well. Uh, anything goes in the top and then you've got the, f the added advantage of being able to open up and go through the drawers. Simply open the front and there you are, straight access to all the drawers. Once again, comes with dividers, you can make that up into uh, separate little compartments in which you can store anything you want. This is a really great box and I can uh, vouch for that because I've got one of these and I'm very, very happy with it. So there you are, just a look at a few of the Polano range. Don't forget Fishing Tackle Australia, of course, huge range of Polano. Through that, look it up in Mo Tackle and pick up probably some of the best specials you're going to find on Polano. Right, having a look at the great range of Alvey reels. Laurie, what have you got here for us? What we've got here is the deep sea range of reels. This is the nine inch. They go down to a six inch. Um, they are a one to one ratio, so they are very powerful reel. Very durable, heavily constructed reels. Large line capacity, so you can fish deep water and heavy line with them. They have a star drag. The star drag will help you fight those big fish. Wear them out for you, get them to the surface a bit easier. Um, and they just 
very dependable reel. Certainly the thing for the deep sea fishermen and of course any charter boat operators out there, look this is definitely the way to go. Laurie, what else have you got there? That's another new reel. Yes, now this is a newer range of reels, but in saying that, they have been around for a couple of years now, the larger ones. The smaller reels have been around for nearly four years now, but in these, they've actually changed the drag mechanism from a star drag to a lever drag, and the further you wind it around, the more drag you have on the reel. So they are, again, very dependable, very durable, and with this graphite back, they are very... That's very, very good. That's pretty good proof of the strength of the uh, of the reel, isn't it? Kid, yeah. go on, do that again, once more. Don't, don't try that with your reel at home, kids. I tell you what, you could end up in a bit of trouble. This is actually another model in that same range, yeah, isn't it, This Laurie? is. This is just a plain spool, six inch. Great reel for fishing the estuaries. Um, light beach for brim and whiting. Um, terrific casting reel. Cast a mile with a with a, the right size sinker and small baits but perfect for brim and whiting on the beaches. It certainly is a good way to go on the beach. Now listen, have you ever seen anything as free as this? Just look at that, doesn't that spin? Laurie, tell us about the uh, the great blackfish reel. Yeah, well the, the LB blackfish reels now have got a ball bearing in the centre and as you can see, they spin very free. Nice easy finger control on that spool, so you can slow it down if you need to or you can hold your fish. It's just. So easy to work with. Great casting, if anybody. And great casting. Work. Anybody who's been out suffering with some of the very old centre pin reels, let me tell you, this is certainly going to make a difference to your chasing of Ludrick. So, oh, and some of the other species that you chase on centre pin, but certainly going to make a difference there. Laurie, what else have we got in the range? What else we've got now is the junior reels. You've got your light estuary, um, the five-inch reel here. It just has a swivel mount, which is again these reels have been on the market for four years now very never, easy to use never seen one come back very easy to use yep. listen there is something interesting how here on the other side and there i know is. we're going to end up with line everywhere in here in a minute but yep. of course they have built something in for small children with small hands and with this we have a special mechanism on the back to make it a lot easier for kids to fish with it's just quite simple isn't it it's just it is. hooking the line over the top yep like that putting your finger, finger on, on it, it and casting turning the reel round and when you take the finger off you release the line. Gee that couldn't be simpler could it? What a great idea. That's just an example of some of the great range of reels that are in the Alvey range. If you want to know more about it of course have a look in Mo Tackle and you'll be able to find that great range. <laughs> There's certainly one thing that could be said. Australian lures have come a long way in a very short space of time. And one of those top of the heap lures, of course, is Down Under. Now, Down Under have a complete range of lures that can be used for virtually any type of fishing. From trout right through to mackerel, barramundi, there's a Down Under lure to suit exactly that. You're looking, of course, at some of the older lures like the Boomerang, been around for a while, available in shallow, deep and ultra deep, but an excellent lure. Down to the little Min Min, and of course, good news is there's an even smaller Min Min coming out, the Micro Min Min. I'd say the trout fishermen are certainly going to be looking for that. But of course, you've got the full range. You've got the Vipers, uh, you've got the Bandits, you've got Jindavix, they're all there. Let's have a look at that range now. Laurie, the Viper, definitely a good lure. Terrific lure. You're looking at one of, one of the better barramundi lures on the market. Australian made, um, good solid construction lure, dives to about four metres, four metres plus depending on the breaking strain of line you've been, that's trolling. Mm. Four metres plus depending on the line you're going to use with it. The heavier yeah. the line, the shallower it'll run. And a great range of colours too. In and the, in a great range, lures. yes. Ten or twelve different colours in that lure. Yeah. Don't forget, yeah. of course, you can check out the colour range on the pages of Mo Tackle. Don't forget to look for it in there. But you can certainly see the great range of vipers. Laurie, I've got a Jindavik. You have. You've got a... The Jindavik is a tight action lure. Runs a bit shallower than what the viper does. Um, again, a good northern lure. Good lure down here as well. But you're looking at Barramundi, Jacks, Trevally... Um, you can use it on flathead in shallow water, but it has a mm. tight action, that lure, and again, another good colour range. I've actually caught cod on that lure, so it, uh, it certainly has got a, a great yeah. range of uses, and, and uh, that particular colour's got an interesting name, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, Elton Jack, they call that one. Elton Jack, there you go. Yeah. I wonder why. Laurie, what else have we got well, there? You're speaking of catching cod, this would be one of the ultimate cod lures. This is a, just the standard, the original down under, now produced a little bit differently now than the original ones which were timber but these ones here are a great lure and there are two sizes and three different bib depths in this lure it'll go up to seven and a half meters on the troll 
which nice is and deep. getting right down there. Into yep. cod country. Right down in there. Yep. yep. One of the better ones going. Don't forget too, as I mentioned earlier, the range of colours, no tackle. That's where you're going to find them. Yep. What else have we got? And here we have what they call a bandit. This one here is a more conventional saltwater lure. You're looking at jacks, barramundi, trevally, flathead. It would work quite well on cod as well. It would. In shallower yep. water. You're looking around the three metres for that fellow there. Actually also works quite well on bass. Yes. You're looking for some big bass. Big bass lure. That's what yep. you're going to find. Yeah. And this one here, the baby. This is one they call a min-min. Now, at the moment, it only comes in a shallow diver, which runs at about one and a half metres. But there, there is, is. There is a new one on its way, a deep diver, which will go to down to about two and a half, which would make a better casting lure, I think, because it'll get right in there quick for you. Yep. But this one here, you're looking at trout, brim, bass, flathead, trevally. If you game, you could throw it around a few jack streams. <laughs> and certainly <laughs> an excellent brim colour there. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. Good colour, yep. good lure. Look, the great range of down unders, you can't miss it on those pages of Mo Tackle. You can find the full colour range, a good Australian product, heaps in the range to choose from, and certainly a lure for every type of fishing that you want to do. So if you're looking for a lure, certainly don't go past the down under range. We got this ugly stick from a professional fisherman here in Coffs Harbour. It's a, an ugly stick, a GB1706. And he actually bought it 15 years ago for Fishing Tackle Australia and he's been using it more or less on a daily basis every time he goes fishing. Now one of the things he has been doing is using 50 pound line on it. Don't do that at home, trust me. They're not really designed for that. But he's been using 50 pound line on this in a, in a pro status. Now it is a bit of an ugly stick, I can tell you that it's all sort of worn away a bit, but it is still totally and utterly in a fishable condition. Look at that. Lay still loads up beautifully, still perfect. You could go fishing with that tomorrow. 15 years old and used by a pro. Now that certainly speaks for ugly sticks, doesn't it? Have a look yeah, at that, eh? Not a bad little rod. Make the old tiger sticks back. Yep. Good to see them again. That's right, actually, the tiger stick is back. The Shakespeare ugly stick tiger stick. They're back, used to be around a few years ago, and now back on the market again, of course, another good ugly stick product from Shakespeare. Chatting with Darren Ryan, of course, who's from the mail order section of Fishing Tackle Australia, the Mo Tackle section. So a lot of you will probably talk to him if you've been placing mail orders. Um, Darren, you've also uh, fairly good on the old ugly stick. Tell me something about it. Well, the ugly sticks are a hollow glass rod. They've got a solid fiberglass tip. They're like a composite blank. They've got a graphite weaving inside the blank. That it's gives them a lot of extra strength, doesn't it? A lot it? of extra strength. Compared to one of like, the lightweight graphite rods nowadays, these things will take a lot more of a beating. And they're just as sensitive. With the solid fiberglass tip, they're fairly sensitive in the tip, but still have a lot of power in the butt of the rod. It's a big advantage too, isn't it? You know, you've got that, that power down the bottom, and probably that, that GB range of the ugly stick, yep. which is uh, particularly good for boat rods that, that actually have extra layers of glass in the butt in to give you that extra strength and to give you that extra power. Darren's actually holding a baitcaster model or a BC model, which uh, has the, uh, the pistol grip, but there is, of course, the, uh, the CA series, which does have a, a standard trigger type grip and that moves right through actually into spin rods, into boat rods, yep. overheads and of course the, uh, the very popular rod, the GB1800 of course, which can be used for either overhead or thread line. So drive, what, uh, what particular ugly stick do you like? Well, I don't mind this one here, the short CA1156. Yeah. They're quite a popular little rod. They are a popular rod. Yep, good for like light canoe fishing, they're fairly short but a lot more durable than the graphites in a canoe. Now you take the knots a bit better. You do a lot of land-based game work, don't you? Yep. Chasing mackerel and tuna and those sorts of things. What ugly stick would you recommend for that sort of work? Um, probably either the GB1706 or the GB1800. All right. The 1706 is a very popular fishing rod. Mm. Um, you can either live bait with it, you can cast with it. They will take um, a thread line or an overhead. So that's, that's a, it makes it a very versatile rod, doesn't yep. it, from that point of view? Very versatile. Actually, if you're out in the boat, and one of the rods that I particularly like snapper fishing with was the GBG 2012 or the 2030, uh, once again, excellent boat rods. We'll take a thread line or an overhead, uh, short, six foot six, and they really are a good rod. But there again, all Shakespeare rods are good, aren't they? Yep. So yep. if you're having a look around for a new rod, have a look through the pages of Mo Tackle, and don't forget, have a look for an ugly stick. Another one of the great Australian lure manufacturers, Halco. And Halco make an incredible range of lures, lures that you could use for nearly any type of fishing, from your trout to your bass to your barramundi to mackerel. Look, any form of fishing you want to do, Halco are going to have a lure for you also. And to take us through the range, we're going to join Fishing Tackle Australia's lure expert, Laurie Banks. Well, with the laser pros, we start with the 190mm 
and these are a great lure for mackerel, jewfish, they'll dive to about a metre, um, you can run them at three or four knots, no real problems there, but you look at mackerel, jews, as I said, um, your tunas, kingfish, they're a great trolling lure, also quite a good casting lure. Um, you come back the next size down and you're starting to look at your Trevallis, um, Taylor, uh, Barramundi. Interesting um, colour scheme that one actually, yes, Laurie, and they, yeah, there is a good range of colours. Like oh, there's a, a great huge, range of colours in, in them. Yeah. Um, we've got some of the colours mixed through the different, different styles of lures we've got there. Um, again, with the laser pros you come down, you start getting down again, Barramundi, uh, Flathead, Mangrove Jack, Trevallis. And in the smaller ones, well, you're looking at flathead, brim, bass, um, redfin. They're another great little lure. All work well. But you're looking at half a metre, down to about a metre in depth on the larger ones. Actually, one of the lures that's really intrigued me, though, is, is the new poltergeist. I mean, only recently out and now coming in different yep. sizes as well. It comes in a couple of sizes. Yep. The larger poltergeist is a good barramundi lure. The little fella like this is a great bass lure. Really good bass lure. Be good yellow belly. Um, good flathead lure, even brim. Another lure that Halco have expanded into is the great scorpion range. Now they've increased that hugely over the last 12 months or so with a great uh, number of different sizes and colours. Laurie, tell us about the scorpion. Okay, in your scorpions we have a 52 mil, a 68, a 125 and a 150. Now in these they come in a couple of different depths. You have a shallow and a deep in each of them. In the medium you have a shallow, a standard and a deep. You're looking at um, two metres on the deep one here, two and a half, and you're probably looking at about a, up to about a metre on either of the shallows. In this fella here, you have a two, a three, and a four metre, and in the deep, you have a two and a half and a five. That's pretty that's good. I mean, five metres for a big lure, they're getting yeah, down there. Well, that's, it's, it makes them a great trolling lure for barramundi. Mm. Um, again, you can use them in the salt for tailor, kingfish, mackerel. They both work well there. These fellas here are more a freshwater estuary type lure. Great for brim. Little fellas, really good for brim and flatties. Works well on bass and yellow belly as well. This fella here is a good flathead size and also good cod, yellow belly and bass lure as well. Actually, I've noticed with that one it has an, a, a, a brilliant tail action. Really swims its tail and wobbles along and certainly attracts fish. So there you go, just a few of the Halco range that we've had a look at. Don't forget they're available in heaps of colours. Looking for the Halco range, where better place to look? The pages of Mo Tackle. Don't forget. And the great name of Dyer, of course, synonymous with good fishing tackle everywhere. Little known fact, actually, Dyer is the biggest manufacturer of fishing tackle in the world. So probably a good thought to keep in mind if you're looking around to buy yourself some new tackle. One of the things they do make, and they make very well, of course, is the great twist buster range of threadline reels. Now, call them egg beaters, call them threadline. Some people even call them wobblies. So basically, if I say threadline, you know I mean one of these great reels here. Uh, they're made in three models. You've got an S, an X, and a Z. Now, the difference between these models, the S model has one ball bearing, the X model has two, and, of course, the Z, top of the range, has four. So if you're looking for sort of that just a little bit of quality, a little bit more smoothness in the reel, obviously you'll move up and get one of the one of the better models of course with the X and the Z they also come with the spare graphite spool very handy if you were going fishing and you want to take along a couple of different line classes uh, or a couple of different size uh, lines to fish with obviously you can load up the spare spool with some other line and take that with you now they're called twist busters why I hear you ask look it's very simple as you know thread line reels uh, because the line sort of comes off a different way that it goes on and has to turn a corner you do end up with a little bit of line twist now I'm sure that you've all seen it you know the line twists up around the end of the rod or physically twists up you know down towards the hook you lift the line up and everything spins well that's line twist now a lot of thread lines give you that problem as I said as the line comes in and turns the corner, it rolls and twists the line. Now, Daiwa have overcome this, and they've overcome this with a very neat uh, little idea. And they've not only placed just the ball bearing in the twist buster arm, but they've actually designed that ball bearing so that it keeps the line straight as it comes in and turns that corner onto the spool. So one way to eliminate twist, definitely the twist buster reel from Daiwa, certainly something to have a look at, and let me tell you, they're a great reel anyway.
Bill, Martin fly fishing been around for quite some time. Certainly have, Peter. Um, around about uh, 1884, Martin kicked off in the States. Gee, that's a long time. They have been around for a long time. Certainly have. <laughs> now, one of the things, of course, is that saltwater fly fishing is becoming much more popular in Australia these days. Absolutely. All over the country. Not just in pockets in, uh, in our neck of the woods, but uh, Australia-wide. No, that's very good. Absolutely. Of course, the fur and feather throwers have been around for a long time, and I'm referring, of course, to the trout fishermen. And uh, probably used to some of the gear, but maybe have not seen the, this great range of Martin Reels. Bill, tell us some more about these particular models in the slider weight. Right, well the Martin uh, Classics uh, range in uh, weight, uh, weight size from a 4 or 5 right through to an 8 9. Right. They're a, um, a very very well put together reel. They've got a one, uh, one piece uh, anodised body. Um, they look, they look like a nice reel, Bill. I mean, it's something that you could certainly use. Of course, just in case you're wondering, for those of you out there who aren't into uh, fly fishing at this stage, because I can bet you're going to get hooked, the reels are actually classified in line weights. So a 5-6 reel, for example, will take a 5 or a 6 weight fly line. A 7-8 weight, obviously, 7-8 weight fly line. So that's basically how they're graded. These Martins are uh, a, a beautiful little reel, really terrific. And, of course, to complement them is the new saltwater range. And have a look at the size of that. I mean, that's a... That's a, that's a 12, 13 weight, isn't it? Certainly is. Certainly is. That's the, the biggest one in the series of the saltwater reels. They start at an 8, 9 and work up to this large model. It uh, would be certainly good for catching uh, anybody who wants to go chasing little black marlin or, uh, or even bigger black marlin. Like tuna. Tuna, yeah, sailfish, absolutely. anything like that. Absolutely perfect if you really want to get into that heavy end of the saltwater fly fishing. Uh, comes in, a, as we mentioned, a couple of sizes there. Um, already got the two of them. There's the uh, 8, 9 weight. Yep. One thing I noticed that uh, it's a very good idea with the drag on the back of the reel, Bill. Absolutely. Yes, it uh, makes it a lot easier to get at uh, when it's on on the rod and uh, uh, to adjust your drag. Yep. Yep. And if you're losing Definitely. line or backing, you don't end up uh, getting your fingers exactly. mixed up with the handle. So, yep. yep, a good, a lovely idea actually. If you're taking up saltwater fly fishing, let me tell you, it's certainly something that you should have a look at. Moving on on the range here, and we've got um, we've got the range of Martin rods. Bill, tell us a bit about those. Again, this is the, uh, the classic series that ties in with the classic reels that we do. Again, uh, we've got a range of, uh, of rod weights here, all two-piece. Um, very, very nice actions and also very economically priced. Actually, they look nice too, Bill, and I mean, they, they do they do have a lovely feel to them. Their, their stop time is really terrific, so uh, that's nice to see. For those who want to get into the entry level, if you want to sort of start off with this saltwater fly fishing, or even, even freshwater fly fishing, and you want to sort of start going and you don't really know exactly what you want, this is another good idea, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. And it's the uh, the Martin fly fishing kit. Bill, what comes in the kit? Well, actually, you get a three-piece uh, Martin rod, the reel, the backing, the fly line, a little instruction booklet to um, get you started in fly fishing, and also a bit of a selection of flies as well. A couple of flies down there just to get mobile with. That great idea. So, look, seriously, if you want to get into this, and let me tell you, it is a lot of fun. It will really, uh, really fill in your time on the water. Uh, have a go at the Martin Fly Kit, or in fact any of the Martin range. Bill, thanks for talking to us about Martin. Not a problem. Thanks, Bill. One of the nice things about being a lure caster is being able to fish with a great range of lures. And one of those great ranges of lures, of course, are the great Mans products. I managed to catch up to Brian Hale from Silstar, who of course are the importers of Mans lures, and uh, Brian decided to tell us all about them. A numbering system that Mans have developed to indicate the depth the lure runs to. Um, a stretch 10, for instance, runs to 10 feet, and uh, a stretch 15 runs to 15 feet, and etc. Um, it means that the fisherman can, can get his lure down to where the fish are, or into the strike zone. Um, and it's very simple for the fisherman to know exactly what depth he's, he's fishing at. And uh, if he's looking on a depth finder and seeing fish at a certain depth, well, he can choose the lure to run at that depth to, to catch them. We've brought out a, a number of new lures this last year. The, the main one has been the stretch 5 series of lures, which is a stretch lure that runs uh, to uh, five feet and was originally brought out for the trout market but we're finding that it's, we're selling as many lures in the uh, salt water area for uh, brim, flathead and, uh, and, and bass even which run from salt to freshwater. The other new model we're going to just about or we have just released is the man's stretch 12 which we've uh, nicknamed the boof bait. That's an interesting name for a lure. Yes, well, we, we named it after the barramundi, which uh, makes a buffing sound when he's uh, feeding on the surface, and uh, we thought we'd give it that uh, interesting name to, for people to remember it by. The stretch, stretch 5 lure, um, and we go through the range, stretch 10, the 12, 
the, the 20 and the 25. This is the new book bait, the stretch 12 that runs to 12 feet. Look at that, eh? Beautiful fish. Thanks, Brian. It is nice to see those great man's lures. And remember, of course, you can find them on the pages of Mo Tackle, just like everything else. We're chatting to Andrew from OTG. Of course, OTG are the Australian importers of the great Abu range of reels. And in front of us here, we've got a few of the fabulous Abu Classics. Abu Classics have been around for a long time, Andrew. They have, they have many years. Uh, I think since the 50s they, they started. Um, they basically remained unchanged because that's the way the anglers like them. Um, but they come up with a good solution in the, in the beginning and they've, they've remained the same with the classics like the five, six and a half and seven thousands. But they've also gone ahead uh, with technology with some of the newer reels like the, the Tournament and Ultracast reels. The 1500. Now, this reel, if I remember correctly, was originally came out in, in the late 50s. I think that's right. It is virtually unchanged. And, and it's still available today and probably still one of the best small bait casters on the market. Exactly, exactly. It's renowned for its uh, uh, casting ability, especially with light lures and light weights. Um, it, it is basically unchanged, however there has been a few high tech uh, changes made to the reel, like the Infinani Reverse in the handle, the new Titanium Level Wine Guide. Um, other than that, it's uh, almost still the same. Another new reel uh, just released this year. It features um, three stainless ball bearings, a lot bigger than the traditional bearings, uh, which aids in casting. It also features the titanium level wine guide and the anti-distortion spools, um, which is useful when using uh, the new braided lines. Yep. Actually, one of the things that you should mention there, Andrew, is the fact that the Abu, the Abu bait casters are probably one of the better uh, reels to be used with braided lines because of their cross-lay line system. Exactly, exactly. With the bigger reels, Peter, the, uh, the level wind uh, doesn't disengage during casting, which means the level one is traveling in the same with the line at all times to reduce our uh, digging problems and the line comes off uh, evenly and smoothly uh, with the level one exactly interesting actually with this with the uh, the t range is uh, the end plate that that's right good. yeah that's a new thing uh, for Abu they've done for their uh, for their anniversary uh, it's a little uh, uh, engraved side plate there of, a, of, a, of an angler uh, landing a fish yeah very nice very tricky just the sort of thing you should have on your rod uh, we spoke look here's another one it's almost a model of the 7,000, isn't it? Much it is. A, a Rolls-Royce version. Exactly, Peter. Anglers are after a, a souped-up version of the 7,000, so they've come up with that, the one-piece aluminium frame, uh, a new C2 drag material, and uh, other than that, it's, it's got the same capacity as a 7,000. Well, everything, everything that you should want in a reel. Certainly, don't forget, if you're looking around for a new bait caster or even a new thread line, don't forget to have a look at the great range of Abu reels. And, of course, where can you find the best Abu reels at the best prices, Andrew? At Fish and Tackle Australia, Pete. Or Mo Tackle. Have a look in Mo Tackle. That's where you'll find them. Thanks, Andrew. My pleasure. Standing here talking to uh, Bill Barnier from Wilson & Company and one of the products of Wilson & Company bringing to Australia is of course the great range of live fibre rods. Bill, tell us something about these live fibre rods. Well, we at Wilson's are very proud of the live fibre uh, range of rods. Um, they're all built on Killwell blanks that we bring in from New Zealand and all custom built in our warehouse in uh, Queensland. Right, and so the rods are obviously specifically built for Australian conditions and for various applications. Absolutely. You're standing there holding a baitcaster. Tell us about the baitcaster range. Certainly. Well, the um, baitcaster range in the live fibre are called the live fibre classics. They uh, range in weights from a 2 kilo, a 4 kilo, a 6 kilo and an 8 kilo for heavier work up in the uh, Territory in Queensland. And they have a definite lock-up point too, don't they? Bill? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I mean, yep. look at that. Lovely. Lovely. Absolutely. Part of the reason being, Peter, the, uh, the composition of the live fibre blanks um, contain a very, very high percentage of graphite in the lower or butt section, blending in the glass towards the tip. So that, that sort of gives you that power down low? Absolutely. While at the same time giving you good sensitivity at the tip, yep. which is what you want in a good, good rod. Good for throwing light lures. Absolutely. I'm actually standing here holding a, uh, a game stick, and uh, a nice little game stick it is too, 8 to 10 kilo. You want to tell us something about those? Well, well, that's it. From the lighter, from the lighter part of the range, we head right up to, uh, well, basically, we head up to 37 kilo uh, game sticks. Uh, in between the the light bait casters and the game, we carry a whole range of light spin from one to three kilo, right through to four, four to six, um, eight kilo both spin and also make them in overhead versions as well. Right, so basically there's a full range, a full range of live fibre rods that's going to suit uh, anybody or any application. And uh, let me tell you, they're built well too, aren't they? Absolutely. Yep. Our rod builders do a fine job. There you go. Right from the horse's mouth, we've been talking to Bill Bainier and we've been talking about live fibre rods.
One of the great things about lure casting is to be able to run along the edge of the bank and be able to cast your lure into the snags and structure where the fish are. And one of the best ways to do it, a Minn Kota electric motor. It's very difficult to do on a power motor. You can't uh, run slow enough and also you're making an awful lot of noise. So a Minn Kota motor is certainly the best way to go. Minn Kota, probably one of the best brands on the market. I'm actually using here an 812RT bow drive on my Hornet. It's completely foot operated. Uh, I can steer uh, left or right. I've got power at my, at my fingertips. All I've got to do is use my foot to adjust the throttle uh, and to adjust the right and left steering. Uh, there is also an on and a constant on position, which means that you can run along without having to do anything. And that particularly comes in handy when you switch on the autopilot. Now, a lot of people have asked about that autopilot, but it really does work. It's uh, a fact that the motor keeps on a constant compass bearing and tide or wind, the motor will correct for that and keep you running exactly along where you want it to go. Definitely one of the beauties of Minn Kota motors. Now Minn Kota make an excellent range which will fit from the smallest canoe to a punt to a fairly large boat and you can push that along with your electric, uh, be it a bow mount as we have here of course, or a standard transom mount motor. Now they also come with the Butte Kota stow which actually lifts the motor up, you can lift it up out of the way and it works perfectly. As I mentioned, Minn Kota make a full range of motors including a salt water version in most motors. Now salt water for Australia is, is very necessary. You have to remember that not a lot of the uh, motors that come into Australia are particularly designed for salt water and uh, if you're going to use your boat, motor in salt water it's a good idea to have one with that extra salt water protection. But have a look at the great range of Minn Kota's. As I said they come in various sizes, various weights from 27 pound right up to the big 55 pound models uh, and you can find an application for that on almost any boat. So make sure, if you're looking for a Minn Kota motor or you're looking for an electric motor, choose Minn Kota, the number one in electric motors, and have a look at the pages of Mo Tackle, of course, available from all your favourite news agents, and you'll be able to find a super price on Minn Kota. Now, if you happen to be like me and you like bait casting, you know, throwing lures and, uh, and fishing that way, you've really got to look at the fabulous Shimano range of Calcutta's. Uh, that's my little 50 XT there. The range extends from the small to the big. You start off with the, the Calcutta 50 itself. Butte little reel, everybody's sort of been chasing after those. This is the bass fishing reel. If you're a bass fisherman, this is what you need to have. You can throw very, very light lures on this and uh, certainly good for bass or brim. The 50 XT, same as mine there, of course, is the, is the tournament casting version. And just have a look at this. Now, how free is that? You can imagine the very light lures that you can actually throw because the problem with bait casters is actually getting the spool to break when you cast it. So with a shallow spool only filled with a small amount of line, of course, these XTs are absolutely brilliant and cast like rockets. Moving through the range, we still have the two silver models being the uh, 100 and the 200. Um, once again, good bass reel, cod, maybe small barramundi reel, definitely getting into the barramundi area with the, uh, the bigger silver size being the 200 and of course the 200 XT, once again the tournament casting version of the 200 reel, so you know, perfect once again, good barra, excellent barra reel, particularly if you want to cut down and use smaller lures, this is the way to go. Uh, moving right along, of course they have a left handed version in, that, uh, in the 200 in a gold which is the 251, left hand version, so for those khaki handers there's definitely a Calcutta there for you. You've still you've got a, into the uh, the 400. Now this is probably you're better in for your barra type lures or your light trolling, your light offshore. Uh, it comes in two models. You've got the 400 with level wind and the 400S, which is a casting version without level wind. And uh, they certainly cast beautifully. Once again, very free, very easy, and a beautiful reel. Moving along to the uh, top of the range where is the 700, of course, once again, you've got the level wine version, uh, excellent for light trolling, good barra reel, big barra or, or uh, really big fish reel, certainly use it offshore, mackerel, those sorts of things. With the level wine, very handy, uh, you don't have to worry about feeding line on with that with that 700 but of course it also comes in the non-level wine version uh, for uh, long distance casting or you know if you just don't want a level wine there you go you can get it in that so there you are that's the fabulous Calcutta range look they really are brilliant reels so if you're looking for uh, a good bait caster reel you can certainly look through the range of Calcutta's
Of course, talking about Australian lures, you can't go past the great Killer Lure range, made by Dave Killerly up in Townsville. Now, Dave manufactures a lure that is going to suit every form of fishing. So, anything you want to do, any sort of fish you're looking for, Dave's going to have a lure for you. And let me tell you, they're a pretty good lure. We're going to join Laurie Banks and we're going to talk about the great range of Killer Lures. Come out with some great models, hasn't he, Dave? Mate, he's yeah. been working on it yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Chatting, of course, with Laurie Banks, and we're talking about this great range of killer lures. And I tell you, Laurie, the old river rat. Hey, looks like a really good lure. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say the old river rat. It's actually quite a new lure. Well, a new river but rat. It is a great lure. A very good barramundi lure. Great on big flathead. It'll run at about 12 feet, 10 to 12 feet, depending on how heavy a line you're going to fish with. But um, yeah, no, it's catching a lot of good fish now. Uh, but as I said, you're looking at big flathead, barramundi, jacks. Um, it'll make a great, um, great cod lure. Um, and yeah, it'll troll. It'll take a little bit of speed, not too much speed. It has a fairly wide action to it, but it is a good lure. Got a younger brother, actually. That's right. Yeah, little brother with that one. Little brother. Yep. And I've got it here in the new colour, and this new colour seems to be going right off up north. But this lure here, again, will take jacks, smaller barramundi, uh, flathead. Good bass lure. Good bass lure, yes. Um, cod and yellow belly. It's, a, again, another great little lure from Killer Lure. Once again, he's got a great range of colours in this too. Oh, Once yeah. he, the Australian lure manufacturers, they've really gone ahead as far as the colouring and the shape and design of their lures is concerned. And Dave Killer Lure, of course, is, is one of those as well. I mean, perfect colour if you're looking, you know, for Terrific the cod. finish. Terrific, Terrific finish. finish. And they look, they really look nice. And they really work. Uh, Laurie, the Terminator. Been Termin around for a little while? Yeah, Terminator's been around for quite a while now and it's always been a great barramundi and jack lure. It's not a real deep lure, it'll run to about eight feet, but you know, anything in, well, you could look at even flathead in water, shallow, in shallow water, because it'll still kick along. Um, but yeah, flathead, barramundi, barramundi and jacks are probably your two main ones, but bass, bass, bass has always been a good one too. They, they certainly do work on bass, I can testify to that one. Yep. Uh, of course, going on to the barra bait itself, the, the lure that uh, Dave oh, yeah. designed specifically for catching barra up north. And uh, Laurie, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the barra bait um, is a good big fish lure. It's a great trolling lure, good casting lure as well. But it was, I think they spend more time trolling this lure than anything else. It comes in three depth ranges, eight feet, 12 feet and 20 feet. So it can really get down there when the, when the fish are sitting in the deep snags and it's very good lure for pulling them out of them. And a great colour range goes with Again, that lure as it well. It goes without saying. With all the killer lures, as I've mentioned before, of course, great colour range, great range of lures. And uh, if you're looking for a very good bargain on killer lures and you're looking for the full range and a good range of colours, there's only one place to look, isn't there, Laurie? The pages of That's Mo right. Tackle. Marine quality aluminium mm. with the dural on grips and a uh, wrist sling. Yeah, very handy. Yeah. We're chatting with Bob from Dymax Gaffs and Nets. Of course, in the pages of Mo Tackle, you'll find the full range of Dymax Gaffs and Nets. And this is the gentleman that makes them. And Bob, tell me, when you actually manufacture your gaffs and nets, you use pretty good quality stuff, don't you? No, oh, absolutely. We can only use the best because uh, otherwise we get it all back. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're quite confident with the quality and the range. and. Uh, and uh, we don't have a problem in that area. Tell us about your rock gaff. Yeah, the rock gaffs, these are available again in powder coated or, uh, or anodised in two piece or three piece. They just, uh, just screw together again with marine quality aluminium threads and uh, they're, they're, they're quite flexible enough to, uh, to carry any, uh, any jewfish or, uh, or tuna you'd like to catch off the rocks. Mm -hmm. And we notice here, of course, you've got your, uh, your, your actual cliff gaffs and your line gaffs for hauling things up yeah. steep areas and the meat hooks we've spoken about yeah. and uh, into your flying gaffs and uh, they come in a various range of sizes too. Yeah, that's the smallest of them. The, uh, that's a four inch flying gaff. Uh, typical of what, um, what would be used off, uh, even off the rocks up to, uh, up to the heavy mother. That uh, that's would, would be our biggest stock size. Yeah, that is certainly is a large uh, gaff, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, three out stainless steel reinforcing all around those heavier ones. Yeah. One of the great things of course about your range is the interchangeable series. So if anybody wants to save a buck, uh, they can get, get a one product which fits various things. Would you like to quickly yeah. run us through that Bob? Sure, this is our light series. We carry a light and a, and a heavy. This, uh, this just all screws apart the same as, same as the entire range. That's uh, the handle, the extension, a prawn net head, uh, available also 
is, uh, is a gaff in a couple of different sizes, right. heavier or lighter. And uh, that's, um, right that's down our, our boat hook. Right down to a boat hook. Right down to a boat hook, yeah. So there you go, if you've and got a little a space problem in your boat, that's definitely going to be the way to go. As we mentioned, there's a, there's a prawn net, there's a landing net, there's a gaff, and uh, there's the, uh, the boat hook, so a great yeah. idea. And the big nets. Yeah, big that's, our, uh, that's what we call our snapper net. That's probably next to the small landing nets, that would be the most popular of our, of our range. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that has an 18, uh, 18 ply net, and the barra net, or Murray cod net, is, uh, is a heavy duty 36 ply net with a uh, with a rounded uh, rounded frame. Right, certainly uh, certainly easier for landing those big ones, isn't it? That's right. So there we are, the great range of Dymax gaffs and nets, and of course you can find those on the pages of Mo Tackle. And when you pick up your Dymax gaff and net, of course you remember Bob as the man that makes them. Thanks very much, Bob. Thanks, Peter. Silstar introduced a new range of rods a few years ago that have really taken off. Once again. Brian Hale to tell us all about it. The features the rod has, it's got a very light tip with a stiff butt, but, but still has a very light action. Uh, first of all, when they build this uh, blank, they get a metal mandrel which they overlay with graphite and fibreglass with a graphite spiral wrapped over that, and then they draw solid fibreglass fibres from butt to tip, and when they get to the tip, they actually uh, merge it to form a solid glass tip in the tip, which is this clear section you can see there. What about the fittings? The fittings are high quality. We use Fuji guides, Fuji reel seats, and, and quality uh, EVA grips. And uh, the, the rods are overbound and underbound as well. How many models are there in the range, Brian? We have about 25 models in this range. We need that many to cover the Australian market uh, successfully. Um, there are different rods for different purposes. For instance, a snapper rod uh, in South Australia, you need a, a, around about a seven foot rod with about eight guides on it, with a light tip, but of quite a powerful butt. Uh, in Sydney and along the coast here, you need, uh, for brim fishing, a six foot rod with a light tip action, but a powerful butt. Um, up in Darwin and around the, the northern part of Australia, uh, Barra bait casters, you, you, you also use a, around about a five and a half foot rod. Uh, it has to be um, a, a light tip for casting barra lures, but also a powerful butt in the rod so that you can stop those big fish when you hook one. Thanks a lot, Brian. It's nice to see that brilliant range of rods, isn't it? As usual, of course, find the best prices in Australia on the pages of Mo Tackle. Maglite torches. Maglite is a name that's been around in, in the torch department for many, many years. And let me tell you, they really are a beautiful torch. They're precision made in the States, in America of course, out of aluminium grade, uh, aluminium grade and uh, that's, that's aircraft quality aluminium, so top of the line stuff. When they put them together though, it's, it's interesting how they do it and they make them basically waterproof. Now, you can't take it underwater, but you can certainly, you're not going to get any water in it from day to day use or out in the great outdoors. The switches are something that's quite interesting. Now, I'm sure you've all had a torch which has basically fallen to pieces or disintegrated or the, or the switch fails. Now, in the maglite, they put the switch in and it's self-cleaning. In other words, each time you press it, it basically cleans itself and it's made out of uh, special metal which doesn't oxidise so that it keeps a good contact surface and it's going to work for you for a long time. The bulbs they use in them are krypton type bulbs. They last a long time and uh, a very, very efficient lighting source. The actual top section is fitted together with a series of rubber O-rings, which I mentioned keeps the water out, which is a, certainly a very handy thing. But the other thing is that they are completely spottable. In other words, by turning the, I'm putting this one back together, by turning the head, you can either spot or flood with the mag light. Now they come in a range of sizes. The one I'm holding is actually a, a 2D size, uh, and they of course take the uh, take the bigger batteries. But uh, you can get them in the smaller C sizes as well, and they go right up from the 2D, which I'm holding, or the 2C, which of course takes the smaller batteries, right up to the to the big one, the six the six uh, battery model, 6D or 6C. Now let me tell you, when you load this up with batteries, you've got quite a mm, heavy weapon, and that's probably why the maglite torches are used by all the law enforcement agencies in the states, particularly, but right throughout the world, and not only just law enforcement agencies, but firemen, ambulance all those sort of people use them because of the quality, the strength and the reliability of the Maglite torch. And let me tell you, they're pretty good. So if you're looking for a torch, don't go past a Maglite and of course you can find those on any pages in Mo Tackle. Yeah, they are.
better than you'll get. Talking to Laurie Banks, and of course what we're looking at now is the great range of mustard chemically sharpened hooks. Now it doesn't matter what sort of fishing application you've got, you're going to find a mustard chemically sharpened hook that's going to do the job right first time for you. Uh, Laurie, we're going to be looking at the big mouth today, yes. which is a new pattern. It is. Good good hook for prawns. Yep, good excellent hook. hook. Prawns, and yep. of course the ganging, the mustard uh, open eye gang hooks, which are also chemically sharpened, so all ready to make up and rig. So, Laurie, without any further ado, show us how to rig all them. Right. You just start with the prawn at the base of the tail, just curl the prawn on, it'll slide on very naturally. It certainly does, look at that. That's a perfect go. hook for presenting a prawn, isn't it? And there's your prawn yeah. on the hook. And to that, you can add a little extra by half hitching. Just to hold the tail up against the top of the around hook. Around the tail, mm. Mm. and that will make that prawn sit a little bit more securely on that hook. The same thing can be done with a peeled prawn. Again, just start at the base of the tail, feed the prawn on. Just keep feeding him on, and on, and on. Like so. So there you go, the mustard big mouth chemically sharpened hook and what a perfect hook to rig a prawn on. Laurie, you're going to show us uh, the new mustard chemically sharpened gang hooks? Yes, yeah, the chemically sharpened gang hooks are great to use with white bait and I'll just show you that one now. The small, the small gang hooks fit really well with white bait and the best way to do it is to lay your hooks on top, line your first hook up with the eye, take note of where your bottom hook sits and that is where you're going to put your bait through and you'll put your bait through like so and if you do it this way your top hook should line up with the eye which is the strongest towing point on your bait they're actually perfect those chemically sharpened gang hooks aren't they they are great and that is there a great go. bait for a flathead or a brim so there you have it, the great range of mustard chemically sharpened hooks. I know we've only looked at two of them, but as I said earlier, there is a hook to suit any fishing application there. And uh, certainly hope that you got something out of that. And don't forget those big mouths. Put the prawn on or even the gang hooks for small white bait. Thanks a lot, Laurie, for showing us the mustard hooks. Not a problem. And don't forget, of course, you can find the best prices on mustard hooks on the pages of Mo Tackle. One thing about building a rod, you need a nice range of good componentry. And of course, Fuji, they're the world's best. And what we've done is we've got a bit of a tape here that Ian Miller put together on how to build a rod. And after uh, Ian's finished, we'll talk to you about that tape. Anybody can build a fishing rod, as long as you can follow a fairly basic set of guidelines. There is a, a certain procedure that you can follow and it, it is basically done in steps. There's a few items that you do need for rod building that are necessary. You can basically roll a rod in your hand and put a thread on it but you do need things like uh, wheels. Well, from there, it's basically uh, dependent on what style of rod you want to build. You obviously must have in your mind an idea of whether you want to have a surf rod, a, a casting rod like this one, a, a spinning rod, which is a bit more versatile. But most rod builders or anglers that are building their first rod need to have an idea in their mind about what they want to actually make. A butt cap, such as this uh, Fuji BRC model, uh -huh. that will be on the actual butt end of the blank. Right. Next will come a, a dual on grip as such. Mm -hmm. This grip is uh, of the length that will give us optimum casting benefit and fish fighting benefit. Right. Those grips come in various lengths. They so come in all different shapes and sizes. I see. Okay. To match you know, the full spectrum of diameter blanks. Mm -hmm. The next component is the winch or reel seat, such as this uh, Fuji Deluxe 18 model. Right. And the last component of the butt assembly is the foregrip, mm -hmm. once again of the Duralon material. And you're actually building the butt, the butt section of the rod first. That's right. It, it always starts butt first because all the com these components obviously have to be slid on from the tip section. I see. Okay. So we can't actually work on the tip section right. until this is secured in place. Yes. Basically there's two rules. One is that the stripper guide should be one third of the way from the reel to the rod tip. Oh, I see. As it is there. Right, okay, gotcha. The other rule is that the guides should be in a decreasing distance towards mm -hmm. the rod tip. Okay. Right. And they've got to follow the natural curve of the of the blank itself. Okay. So you want me to bend that, do you? Yeah, if you if you bend that back there like Right. 
you have now, you'll see that blanks in a fighting curve, right, and the line yes. should follow the curve of the blank. Okay. Now, we've got five guides here, mm -hmm. but it's obviously not enough. We, we need another one to go in here. The underbind is actually a binding that goes underneath the, the guide. Mm -hmm. It serves two purposes. It firstly protects the rod from any um, pressure the guide may exert on it, and also gives the guide a nice firm bedding so it doesn't tend to move around at all during the life of the, of the rod itself. I see, and, and the underbind extends the whole length of the guide foot? The underbind extends past the guide foot, normally about one and a half times the length of the, of the foot of the guide. Now we've marked out where the bindings are going to go, we can, we can take the guide straight off the blank and All we can right. lay, the, lay the binding thread. Okay, before we actually lay thread onto the blank, we have to make a little bit of preparation. We have to cut a, one or two small pieces of masking tape. We have to also have a razor blade on hand. And we also have to cut a small piece of thread about six inches long called a pull-through. I am. Yeah, the pull-through's application will become a lot more apparent at the end of the binding, but for now, the first hurdle to overcome is actually starting the binding off. Oh, OK, right. There we go. The perfect way to build a rod with the Australian rod builder, Ian Miller, and his mate, Rod Harrison. Actually, we could only put in a small segment of that tape. If you'd like to get the full tape, it will certainly be available from Mo Tackle. And also, we'll be offering a good range of Ian Miller built rods, so look for those as well. The great range of pen reels, pen from America, rugged, reliable, robust, been around for a long time. In fact, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of fishermen have actually started off by using one of these great pen reels. Uh, I can remember back to the days when probably they were some of the only overheads that you could actually get on the market. And they're still around, they're still with us, and they still have that, that excellence, that durability of life that they've had. And of course, I'm looking at one of the Senator ranges here, high speed, ball bearing drive, uh, star drag, look, Excellent reel, looking for something in the light trolling or game fishing area. Look, the Senator's going to be the reel for you. If you want to move on though, something a little bit upmarket that Penn have done, of course, is move into the, the lever drag models. As we all know with the star drag, once you move it, you can't be really sure where it is. You cannot go back to set your strike pressure and you don't exactly know where it all was. Well, with the, with the lever drag, of course, you know that because you've preset your lever, you've preset it to the strike. The moment you move it or the moment you go back, you know exactly where you are in the strike range. So the GLS range, also from Penn. Excellent reels, that rugged and reliability from the Senators has been built into these GLS models as well. And uh, look, you certainly can't go past them. If you're looking for something in that lever drag, this is going to be the reel for you. Don't forget, of course, the old international, probably the game reel, renowned as the game reel th throughout the world, of course, is the Pen International. So if you're looking for a pen, have a look on the pages of Mo Tackle and pick up the best deal. Of course, one of those great names in fishing is Penn, and Penn reels from America have been around for a very long, long time. And I'm holding here one of the great spin fisher range, and they certainly have been here for a long, long time. Big, solid, robust reels, of course, deep spools, uh, plenty of line capacity. This particular size, excellent for the tailor, the Jew fisherman, or the fellow chasing salmon. Look, excellent reels in the, as far as the pens are concerned. They range in size from the 4200 right up to the 9500, so there's plenty of scope for any reel that you're looking for. The particular one I'm holding actually has the handle on the left-hand side, but this is easily converted to a right-hand retrieve model. Laurie, you're holding a GTI. Yes, I've got the baby of the GTI range. It's the 310. Yep, there is a 320 and a 330. The 310 is ideal for 15 to 20 pound line bottom fishing. The 320, 330 you can fish heavier. Um, very good reels, graphite construction, low maintenance, heavy duty level wind mechanism in them. They are a very good, very solid reel. And with all pens, five year warranty. Yep, that's a big plus isn't it? If you're it looking is. for a real five year warranty, look you can't go can't past go that. Wrong. Can, can't go wrong at all. Get yourself hold of a good pen reel and of course if you're looking for the best bargains, don't go past the pages of MoTackle. Having a look at True Turn hooks. True Turn hooks were invented by a fellow called John Campbell. John was working on an Air Force base in the United States and he discovered that the little clips that he was holding his punch cards together with, when they came off the punch cards they actually rotated. And the reason for that? they had a little crank in them. 
So John, being a very keen fisherman, decided, look, this could be a brilliant idea for catching fish, so he actually inserted a little crank inside his hooks. And the result? Astounding. Instant hookups on fish, all because of that little crank. And Laurie, explain to us why that little crank works. Okay, Peter, you hold that hook between your fingers like it's in a fish's mouth. When you pull the hook out, it will twist and stand up, give you a better, better bite. Gee, I mean, it's almost as if you can't miss, isn't it? That's right, yep. It's a very good idea. Just and actually it's rotates. got to help. It rotates straight through the plane, hook up. There you go, yeah, the little crank in true turn hooks. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, not only do you have a sort of a straight true turn hook, but you can actually gang them. And it's quite interesting the way this is done. You've still got your true true turn hook with a crank, and they're actually held together with swivels. Now, the interesting part of that is that you can, if you really want to, actually set your, your gang hooks in different directions. So you could easily put two hooks into the bait and have one standing up. It's, it's merely up to you. The hooks will rotate, they're free, and uh, you can actually and use the, them like a little stinger. Yep, and the swivels come in the pack with the yep. ganging hooks. It's all complete, hooks and swivels. So have a look at those on the pages of Motackle Lorry. We've got some of the range here, including the new but chemically sharp. Yep. Would you like to run us through yeah. that? Yeah, now we've got the heavy duty salt water, your standard salt waters, heavy fresh water, two different lightweight hooks there which you use mainly fresh but you could use them for light line brimming and then as Peter said the chemically sharp range of hooks. Yep, really good stuff. Look, have a look for the True Turn hooks on the pages of Mo Tackle. Don't forget they're always at a super duper price but why not give them a try because that little crank, it really works. Get yourself onto True Turn. Of course, if you're looking for a lure, you can't go past the great producer range of lures. And they build a lure that's uh, suitable for any type of fishing. Anything you're looking for, producers have got a lure for it. We're talking to the Fishing Tackle Australia lure expert, of course, Laurie Banks. Laurie, tell us about the producer range. You know, producers have a large range of lures. We only have a couple of them here with us at the moment. The one Pete's got in his hand there is a Barramundi Mauler. That's the five inch version. It comes in a larger six inch version as well. Terrific up north for the barramundi. They work well on flathead as well, the big fellas. Um, you could use them on kingfish, jewfish, mackerel. They're good solid bib construction in them. They're very good lure. Yeah, perfect colour too for barra. Yep, perfect great, great colour range in that lure. What else you got there, Laurie? Another one I have here is the lightning minnow. And this is only the baby. They have two sizes, a larger size as well. But in this size, it's a great trout and brim, and brim lure. Um, in the larger size, you can look at flathead, bass, mangrove jacks, trevally. Great, another great little lure. That one there. Yeah. And the third one I have with me is a chuggalug. This is a surface lure. It just wobbles across the surface, flip plopping its way back to the rod tip. Um, this 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 type of lure is my favourite type of lure. Absolutely it's devastating on bass, isn't it? Terrific on bass, this lure. Um, and I like to like using these lures because you see it all happen. Yep, look, produce a range of lures. Why don't you just have a look at that range that we've got on show for you? Here's a new one. It's the charade tool from the famous charade company in America and it's put together and this is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't seen one of these, I strongly suggest you have a look. There have been a number of tools on the market that come together with a full kit of instruments. You know, you get uh, screwdrivers and knives and files and saws and basically everything and even a little gadget for getting stones out of Boy Scouts hooves. Um, but this is probably the top mark. Now, some of the other ones, you may remember when you put them together, they could pinch your hand. You had to open them to get the instruments out. Well, this new charade tool, you don't. Everything is right there for you. You can actually use the implements right there as it stands in the flat. Uh, and you get them out from both sides without having to open the tool. Of course, one of the great advantages with the charade tool is the way the blades lock, or the implements lock. Now, those of you who have had some of the other form of tools will know that it's very easy for everything to fold up on you right at the wrong moment, just as you're about to do something and the whole lot folds up. Well, the charade tool can't do that, because very simply the implements come out and they lock, and there is nothing that you can do to get them back in. So what you have to do to release that is you simply press down on the little spring load here and that releases the lock and you can fold up your implements. All your implements, as I said, all there, readily accessible, 21 of them, really terrific. Now what I've done is I've opened one up here so that we can have a, a good look at all the little bits and pieces that are in there. Of course you've got the small screwdriver, you've got the bigger screwdriver, 
a leather bore or leather punch or a scriber. It does have a sharp edge on it, so you could actually scribe things. You've got a serrated edge knife, which I suppose you could use for sawing up uh, logs or, well, you wouldn't want to be a terribly big log, but you can certainly use it for cutting things. Very, very sharp, I can assure you. I've been there and cut myself on it. You've got a hook disgorger and a measure. Uh, on this side as well. Look, you know, certainly things on that, just on that side alone, there's some implements to keep you right out of mischief. Having a look on the other side, we have a bottle opener, very important, and a can opener, can be used to open cans as well. We have a scraper, we have a Phillips head screwdriver, we have a knife blade, and we have a file. Uh, also, included in that there is uh, a few other instruments tucked away we've got the uh, the wire stripper uh, all in all an absolutely brilliant tool as I said 21 different implements for probably 2001 different uses so uh, you know find yourself a charade tool everything folds up beautifully machined well put together lovely tool I know this one's actually mine uh, but a really great tool if you're looking for something uh, you know for a gift for the fisherman that that has everything I can certainly recommend the charade tool look for it in the pages of Mo Tackle. Having a look at the new K line from Kokoda actually with Steve Starling's name on it you might notice and it comes in a very interesting little pack this is called a UFO pack and the UFO pack is great because you can actually just feed the line out from inside the pack so very handy for spooling up or uh, if you want to use it for leader material you can just pull it out and if you're spooling up you can actually spool it out of the pack the pack of course is reusable uh, you can just hold it on either side and that'll put extra tension on it if that's what you need the other handy thing with the UFO pack is it comes with a little line cutter up the top here so if you want to cut a bit of line off there you go you can do that now, I was pretty impressed with this line and I had a look at it. It's got excellent abrasion qualities and very good knot strength. And uh, I can demonstrate that for you. If you just take a little uh, overhand knot in the line, now most of you know if you get one of those in your line, the line's going to break at that knot. Well, I tell you what, 12 pound line, and you can exert quite a lot of force actually on that line and it won't break. Very, very good, uh, particularly if you're fishing and you're going to end up with a knot situation. As I said, K line comes in the UFO pack and it comes in various other forms it also comes uh, in, a, in a blister pack which you'll see hanging on your uh, on your uh, your shelf and they are uh, 550 yard links by the way that come in the UFO packs or you can actually get it in another blister pack form and these are a matched a match set where you get your uh, 275 yards of K line that's in the 12 pound and it comes with a lure now there are different packs, there's a trout pack, there's a brim bass pack, there's a flathead pack and there's a barra pack. So there you go, so you can get those two in the match set. Once again, recommended by Steve Starling, so you know it's going to be a pretty good product when you look at it. So there you have it, K-Line. Have a look for that on the pages of MoTackle. Just in for a service, was it? Yep. There you go. Having a chat to Scott Fleming. Scott, of course, is one of our real service technicians here at Fishing Tackle Australia. And uh, you've been maintaining that reel, giving a bit of a clean up and uh, fixing it up. Now, one of the things that we've been running lately in the magazine, of course, is the Clark's Threadline Reel Lubricant. And uh, we use it a fair bit here, don't we? Yeah, that's right, Peter. It's a good lubricant. It's more of a mixture of grease and oil put together. Um, it's more designed for your gears, your pinion gears, things like that. It certainly cuts out wear, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's right. It slows, it it right, slows down. It right down and uh, makes everything run smoothly. What are you doing there, Scott? You just put that straight into the gearbox, do you? Yeah, mate. Um, just a bit mainly on, on your pinion gear, your drive gear, a bit on your oscillating gear. Things like your bail rollers, handles, things like that. They require a lot of grease in this. This is mainly just for the parts to do most of the work. So virtually it's just a bit like the car, you fill up the gearbox with that stuff? Yep, that's right. And it, it, keep, it lasts for a long time, doesn't it? I mean, it's not something you have to replace fairly often. No, nah, well, the wear over time, probably once, depending on how much you work, you work your reel gets, uh, once a month, maybe every two months. Right. So if you're using it a fair bit, maybe once every once a month, maybe once every two months. Once again, if you're sort of one of those once a year fishermen or a, a, a holiday angler, probably only have to do it once a year. Yeah, that's true. Right. Put, so you fill it up, what, about half full? Yeah, just Whoa, into the main full. gearbox here. Yeah. Put a little bit into your sections you yeah. can see. You can take your main drive gear out of, if you like. Get it in behind right that. There. Generally fill about a quarter to half filled your gearbox, just so the parts are not so they're overworking. Otherwise you'll find it's hard to wind your reel. You can push it around in there just to get it in under your gears. Like so. Yeah. Just filling your gearbox up. Maybe a little bit more. 
got this easy to use syringe. Makes it easy to get it in there. That's handy. Yeah. So there you have it, Clark's Threadline Real Lubricant. Uh, great thing to have, fairly cheap. Look for it in the pages of Mo Tackle. And uh, of course, you can service your own reel, open it up, fill it up. Just one point, it will weep out around the edges because obviously the seals and the reels aren't, you know, watertight or, or brilliant. And that's the other thing it will do. It will help to keep water and stuff out of the inside of the reel. Um, and it will weep out, so you just wipe it off. It's, it's a normal effect. But uh, certainly have a look for it, Clark's Threadline Real Lubricant. Spinner baits. You've heard an awful lot about spinner baits. You've read about them in the magazine. So uh, those of you that have read Mo Tackle have even read a couple of articles that I've written about them. And spinner baits, well, they're definitely here to stay. Don't go out and throw away all your plastic lures, let me tell you. But there are certain applications for spinner baits. The beautiful thing about spinner baits is that they're virtually snag proof. So you can actually tow them through heavy cover or through weed and they will pull through. The hook sits up. Uh, it's actually towed from this point out here. And very, very snag resistant. The other beautiful thing about spinner baits is for using on vertical structure. If you're fishing against a rock wall or against a log or, or in heavy cover like that, you can throw them in and as they sink, the blade actually spins. So they're working all the way. They helicopter down and they actually work all the way. What I'm holding here, of course, is a Kokoda spinner bait, as recommended by Mr. Bass himself, John Bethune. And uh, that's the size that John designed and as being perfect for bass. It's also very good for brim. I've actually caught bass, I've caught brim, and I've caught flathead uh, on these uh, spinner baits. And I'm looking forward, actually, to the next uh, dolphin fish season to actually go off offshore and throw some around some of the floating structure. The Kokoda spinner bait, the king spin, beautiful little lure. But I'll tell you what they've done. They've come up with one better. And what they've done is they've come up with the the, uh, the magnum spin. Now this, uh, this lure would be particularly good, this spinner bait, particularly good for cod and barramundi and that's what it's designed for. So if you want to sort of go and chase some big heavy stuff, this new magnum spin from Kokoda, of course. Uh, once again another excellent lure, a uh, bit big for Mr Bass himself I can tell you, but, but if certainly if you want to go and chase the heavy stuff, have a look for these new magnum spins. They come in a very range of colours. There's one thing that you might have noticed, we've gone through this tape, we've been referring of course to Mo Tackle. Now just in case any of you who are viewing this tape not aware exactly what Mo Tackle is, well here it is. It's a 48 page publication that we release every month. Now, you can find it on your newsagent shelves, if you want a new local newsagent, have a look on the shelf. Mo Tackle. That's where you'll find it's there every month and absolutely packed full, jam packed full of super specials. One of the deals we're offering to you, if you're viewing this tape, you can actually get a 12-month subscription to Mo Tackle. And what we do is we package it up, slip it in a plastic bag, and it arrives straight through your letterbox. And that's probably one of the better ways to get Mo Tackle. And the special deal, look, $12. That's all it is. $12 for 12-month subscription to Mo Tackle. And that is going to put in your hands Australia's best and cheapest tackle prices. So make sure you don't miss out. As I said, find it on your newsagent shelf, or pick up the phone number on the end of this tape, and give us a ring and talk to us about this great subscription offer. 12 bucks for one year, Mo Tackle. Look, couldn't be easier, couldn't be cheaper. In each magazine on page 44, if you go straight through to that and you find page 44, you'll find our order page. Simply follow uh, the advice that's in there, fill out the details, send it in to us, and you've found another way to pick up Australia's cheapest tackle buys. Don't forget it, eh? The old Mo Tackle. Look for it. So there you have it. I trust you've enjoyed our little video and you have actually got some inf interesting information out of it. Remember, don't forget Mo Tackle. You can buy it at your local newsagent or of course you can subscribe. So as I normally say at the end of every magazine, time for me to go fishing. But remember, may your lines be tight and your seas slide. See you later. I'm Peter Russell.